a new proclamation. What wise men, great men, medical men, professional people have not been able to do, God will do it. All those things that are forgotten, your forgotten strength, your forgotten power, your forgotten revelation, everything you said, I had a dream long ago, and I thought, this is what I will do. I've forgotten now, your forgotten vision will come up again. Passion will come up again. Revelation will come up again. New life will come up again in your life in Jesus' name. Only Christ Jesus has the power of this new year. An unforgettable encounter beckons. We are connecting to the God of wonders this new year for salvation and deliverance. Welcome GCK to Asaba. Delta State, Nigeria, January 26th to 31st, 2023. 1600 hours GMT daily and Global Sunday Worship at all 700 hours GMT. Also featuring ministers and professionals conference with Impact Academy for Youth, Young Adults and Young Professionals. It's a new year of wonders this 2023. From the Niger Delta, the oil of anointing will be transported by satellite and all our social media links to over 150 countries of the world. Join the team in GCK audience as the man appointed by God, the convener of GCK, Pastor Dr. W.F. Komoi, connects the world to an unforgettable encounter with the God of Wonders. Glorious music ministrations by choirs from nations across the world with guest music ministration by Jonathan Lee. Darkness gone. Yeah. Premature death cancelled. Yeah. Yours is now to reap the benefit. GCK, the, the gospel, gospel to every creature. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name tonight. We bless your name because of your goodness. Thank you for your promises that cannot fail, will not fail. And Lord, we come to hold on to those everlasting hands, everlasting arms. And we pray that tonight you pour down your blessings upon your people in Jesus' name. The children come, the youth come, the campus and the adult fathers and mothers, preachers and leaders. Bless everyone in Jesus' name. And I pray that anything that needs to be turned around in every life and any life you will do it for us at this time and we pray that unforgettable blessings and signs and wonders and miracles will come upon every life but thank you because we know you have answered in jesus name we pray god bless you you can sit down once again i want to appreciate your coming and you know that the theme for the retreat at this time is power for the present hour. We're looking at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 11. It says, even unto this present hour. Even unto this present hour. The apostle was writing to the Corinthians. And as he wrote to the Corinthians, he spoke about the present hour. And then he described what was happening at that time. And he leads us to what is happening at this time. Even at this, even unto this present hour. We both hunger and thirst and are naked and are buffeted and have no certain dwelling place. As we think about power for the present hour you want to understand the hour in which we're living the time in which we find ourselves the period in which we find ourselves this present hour is an hour of insecurity and suffering all over the nation all over the continent and even beyond africa the hour of insecurity and suffering and now we need the power for such an hour that the lord will keep you the lord will protect you and the lord will preserve you and the power for this hour of insecurity 
and this hour of suffering the lord will grant you in jesus name as we look at the word of god it tells us that the days in which we live will be described as the hour of distress and perplexity the hour of distress and perplexity and you look around your personal life your family life in your professional life all around you you can see how people are in distress how people are perplexed and it is such an hour that brings us together now because we're looking up to the lord that at this hour of distress and perplexity the hour that is so dangerous that many people do not know what they're going to do and their hearts are failing them that god will give you stabilizing power he will give you spiritual power as we look at uh, luke chapter 21 from verse 26 let me uh, go back to verse 25 and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity the sea and the waves roaring men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken here it tells us of the time of distress the hour of distress and we're living at such an age now and such a time now that's why we come together at this time at the end of the year that's whatever the distress whatever the perplexity the power to remain strong and the power to remain standing on the very solid rock that we have come as he has brought us into the kingdom that hour will not destroy your face in jesus name it's an hour of trial and temptation in which we live as we go through the challenges of our time the challenges of our day we experience trials and peculiar temptations that appear peculiar to this time and the Lord has given us the assurance that whatever the trial whatever the temptation will have the power to stand and you will have the power to stand Revelation chapter 3 I read from verse 10 because that was kept the word of my patience I also will keep you listen to this from the hour of temptation the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth it's not a peculiar situation with you that you're going through trial is coming upon all over the world and it's not peculiar that there are some temptations like arrows of the devil that are shot at you but the lord has given us the assurance and that's why we came together at this time there will be power for your hour of trial power for your hour of temptation and the sea of temptation and persecution will not drown any of us in jesus name have you noticed in your life the hour of conflict and warfare the hour of conflict conflict and warfare but as we go through the warfare and go through the conflict here is the assurance we have that you will overcome i will overcome because he gives us the power for the hour of that conflict and warfare and so that leads us to the point that we know that whatever it is may be a challenge in your life 
as you come to this retreat there's going to be deliverance there's going to be redemption the hour of distress will give way to the hour of deliverance and the hour of redemption in Jesus name hour of darkness that's there hour of disappointment that's there but this is your chance if you will hold on to the promises of God the Lord will see you through it is an hour we must not forget there's an hour of his return the Lord is coming again and he says the dead in Christ shall rise and we which are alive will be caught together with them in the clouds and so shall we ever be with the Lord and at that hour coming that he is the hour of his return he came the first time and then he went to Calvary he died for us then he rose again for our salvation for our justification he rose again for our victory he rose again so that we will have the power coming from Calvary to overcome and then he's gone to heaven but he says I will come again the Lord is coming again and we're waiting for his coming and he says that day and that hour knoweth no man no not even the angels of God in heaven for the father knows that hour and whenever it will be the Lord wants to get you and I ready you'll be ready for the hour of his return in Jesus name that's why we have come so that whatever we face whatever we're going through whatever period age and or era we might be in in our personal lives in our family lives in our church life in our individual lives we receive the power to stand and when we cross over to the new year we'll be crossing over not in weakness but in power we'll be crossing over not in confusion but in power We'll be crossing over not in suffering and sickness but to we'll be crossing over in health strength and power in jesus name that's why you want to give yourself to the lord completely during this retreat so that every sickness and every weakness and every impotence and every infirmity will be blown away and swept away out of your life in jesus name and then he empowers you and you go back to where you came from and the world will not conquer you you will conquer the world the flesh will not conquer you you will conquer the flesh and satan will not conquer you you will conquer every demonic power against your life in jesus name tonight as we begin this wonderful retreat power for the present hour we're looking at the message the empowered christian in the world the empowered christian in the world in galatians chapter 1 verses 3 and 4 galatians 1 verses 3 and 4 grace be to you and peace from god the father even our lord jesus christ who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world do you know he will deliver you from every attack coming from the world every temptation coming from the world every arrow coming from the world he will deliver you 
and then it says according to the will of God our father is telling us that our living in victory over the world our living in dominion over the world our living in a triumph over everything coming in the world it says that's the will of God and as you look at your life if there's anything that is overcoming your life thank God you have come to the Mount of Transfiguration it's going to transform your life it's going to empower you and you will live victoriously in this world in Jesus name Galatians chapter 6 verse 14 but God forbid that I should glory that means God forbid that I should, I should glory in my own strength because that amounts to nothing God forbid that I should glory in my own ingenuity and wisdom because that will not avail in the day of distress and perplexity in a time of trial and temptation in this time of insecurity and suffering in the time of conflict and warfare in the time of darkness and disappointment all that native intelligence all that personal natural wisdom will not avail that's why it says God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world whatever it is in the world at this hour that may try to walk against your life they'll come under your feet in Jesus name John chapter 16 verse 33 John 16 verse 33 these things have I spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace the peace of God will reign in your heart all the confusion will vanish away the pain of guilt will vanish away and all the turmoil in your heart everything the turmoil of uncertainty insecurity and spiritual confusion everything will vanish away at this retreat and then it says it will grant you peace peace in your soul and peace in your heart and peace there will be peace in your family and it says in this world in the world it shall have tribulation trouble trial temptation pressure pain but be of good cheer i have overcome the world you overcame the world on your behalf and that victory will be yours in a practical personal way in jesus name the empowered christian in the world there are three points we're going to consider before we pray number one prevailing power for encumbered captives in the world prevailing power for encumbered captives in the world number two preventive power for embattled Christians in the world preventive power for embattled Christians in the world and then number three perpetual power the power you get at this retreat will continue with you at home there will be power on the street there will be power in the bus there will be power anywhere you go perpetual perpetual power the power will remain in Jesus name perpetual power for endued concourse over the world concourse over the world 
perpetual power for endued conquerors over the world. Now let's come to number one, prevailing power when combat captives in the world. There are things that come into our lives as human beings, as a natural man, as a natural woman, as a normal boy, normal girl. There are things that come into our lives and they take over our lives. They invade our lives. They take over and they make us captives. And we cannot go the direction we want to go because those things infiltrate our lives until those things capture us like captives, like slaves. We want to be free, but we're not free. We struggle and do everything we can do, but we cannot because sin invades the life. Or maybe sickness invades that life. Or maybe powers of darkness invade the light. Or maybe a power coming from somewhere higher, greater than your own power oppresses you, comes upon you. It destroys your life. It diverts your life. It redirects your way, the way you wanted to go, the dream you had, you couldn't fulfill because of that overcoming overwe overbearing overwhelming power that comes against your life and you've been on and on and on struggling but the more you struggle the more you are captured the more you are entangled and the more you're encumbered and there's nothing you could do by yourself that's why the Lord has brought us together. All those things that overpower you, the table will turn around. You will overcome. You will overpower them in Jesus' name. That's why we're here. Mark chapter 6. In Mark chapter 6, reading from verse 31. Mark chapter 6, verse 31. And he said unto them, Come ye yourselves apart into a desert place and rest a while. Come ye yourselves apart. That's the reason for the retreat. Come ye yourselves apart and be restored to the great power to the old time power to the old time victory to the old time courage come ye yourselves apart and be refreshed you are dry dreary weary and it's like you are almost suffocating dehydrated no strength in you no power in you and the Lord has brought you apart here unto this seemingly desert place and be refreshed come ye yourselves apart and recover recover when you face battles here and there temptations here and there trials here and there arrows of the devil of the enemy here and there shooting at you and you're almost gone and life is almost gone out of you and your conviction is eroded and your stamina is weakened and your backbone is broken it says come apart so that you can recover come ye yourselves apart and recuperate and renew your strength and renew your life because all the battles of life here and there challenges of life here and there if you continue like that you'll fall by the wayside that's why it says come apart 
before you come apart come apart before you're torn to pieces come apart before your life is totally drained of strength and power and vitality and as we come apart it wants us to understand you look at different areas of your life where you're encumbered you look at different areas of life where you are being captured captured by the things that surround you like Luke chapter 10 from verse 40 Luke chapter 10 verse 40 but Martha was combat about much serving it wasn't a bad thing she was doing that sometimes good things encumber our lives some good things deny us of the better things in life a better victory in life a better progress in life a higher process progress of life there's some good things that take better things away from us and in the case of Martha, the good thing she was doing was encumbering her life, putting pressure on her life, and making her to lose sight of the better thing that Mary had chosen. And she came to Christ and said, Lord, does that not care that my sister has left me to serve alone beat her therefore that she help me tell her to get up and leave the better sin for the lower sin for the good sin and join me in my kind of frustrated service and Jesus answered and said unto her master master that might be your name there and Jesus said and said and said unto her if I put your name there thou art careful and troubled about many things but one thing is needful the issue of the kingdom one thing is needful the challenge of your salvation one thing is needful. The concentration on that holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. One thing is needful. Your readiness for the coming of the Lord. One thing is needful. Your victory over those besetting sins. Your victory over those paralyzing situations. Your triumph over those things that weigh you down. One thing is needful. And Mary has chosen that good part. I pray you'll make the right choice. Somebody there said you'll make the right choice. Which shall not be taken from her. When things encumber our lives. And we don't have any time to pray. We don't have any desire to pray. We don't even know what to pray for. And we're just running the rat race all over the world. We're here and here and there. And then we leave our base. We leave the foundation. We leave the essential scene. We abandon the important thing we forget our salvation we forget the strength and the power to live the victorious life and yet not that we are lazy we are encumbered by many things the Lord will give us the strength today the power today to disengage from those things that swallow up our lives and swallow up our strength and once again 
will rise up in the strength, in the power of the Lord. We will win the victory. Mark chapter 4. Reading from verses 18 and 19. Mark chapter 4. Verses 18 and 19. And these are they which are sown among thorns. Such as hear the word. Now the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, was talking about the sower that went out to sow. And he said, part of the seed, good seed, lively seed, living seed, proper seed, fell by the wayside. And some among the stony ground and some among the thorns. Now it's going to explain the thorns. And it says, these are they, the seeds of the world that are sown among thorns, such as hear the world and the cares of this world. The cares of this world. And the deceitfulness of riches and the lost of other things entering in choke the world and it becometh unfruitful the light became encumbered with the cares of this world there are many people that will say i come to the bible study and i've seen all and I don't need any time of coming apart to retreat. And we have our weekly meetings. And they say, those meetings are not for me. I don't need to come apart to retreat like this. The point is this. The cares of life during the week. The desire for all the things during the week. The deceitfulness of riches during the week many times choke the world that you cannot see the evidence of the seed being sown because those things the cares of this world the deceitfulness of riches and the loss and the desires for other things entering in choke the world and so it becomes unfruitful and it's at the time we come together like this that we have the chance to examine our lives examine what makes the world unfruitful unprofitable in our lives and then we get rid of those cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the loss for all the things so that we can sow the word and sow the seed during this time and all the encumbrances in our lives everything will go away in Jesus name Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 3 Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 3 for thus says the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem break up your fallow ground and sow not among thorns the thorns that encumber the land the hindrances that stop a progress the busyness being very busy every day day and night that makes the world unfruitful it says so not among thorns and it says break up your fallow ground disengage yourself from those things that occupy the land occupy the heart put pressure on the life that you're not able to bear fruit in the world break up your fallow ground so not among the sons circumcise yourself to the Lord and take away 
the first king of your heart, ye men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, lest my fury come forth like fire and burn that none can quench it because of the evil of your doings. The Lord wants us to disengage ourselves during this time from all encumbrances and entanglements. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, reading from verse 4, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4, No man that worries entangleth himself for the affairs of this life. As you come to this retreat and you want to receive the power for the present hour and you want every weakness in your life to go away and all the deficiencies in your Christian experience, you want all that to be cleansed and you want to rise up in the strength of the Lord, in the power of the Spirit, in the triumph that Calvary as purchased for us, it says, you have something to do. The things that occupy the heart, the land of your heart, the entanglements, the hindrances, you want to get rid of them because you aim at victory, because you aim at triumph. No man that worries entangles himself for the affairs of this life, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. And I pray God will give you the grace. You'll get rid of anything and everything that will hinder the overflowing power of God in your life in Jesus' name. It will grant your power. I said it will grant your power. But then we forsake those things that hinder the flowing, overflowing power of God in our lives. And then we wait upon the Lord. We pray. You pray with repentance. You pray with the renewal of your commitment and consecration to the Lord. You pray cutting off everything and anything that will hinder the mighty power of God in your life and that power will come you will overcome you will triumph because there is prevailing power that he gives to us after those encumbrances I got to read of Isaiah chapter 40 Isaiah chapter 40 verse 28 as thou not known as thou not heard that the everlasting God the Lord the creator of the ends of the earth fainteth not neither is weary there is no searching of his understanding 29 he giveth power to the faint. He giveth power to the faint. Sometimes, as you battle the challenges of life, the sweat, you faint, and it's like power is gone. You renew your power at this time. All the lost ground. You recover once again in Jesus' name. Lost courage and confidence and conviction. You will recover in Jesus' name. The lost Christian experiences, salvation, with victory over sin, sanctification, with holiness of heart, holiness of life. Baptism in the Holy Ghost for the power of the Holy Ghost and the ability to pray and pray through that we have lost. 
We're going to recover this time in Jesus' name. He giveth power to the faith, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But, but, they that wait upon the Lord, that's how to recover, that's how to renew our strength, that's how to be refreshed. When we get rid of all the encumbrances, all the hindrances, when we get rid of the weight in our lives and the sin that so easily besets us and the things that crouch out spirituality out of our lives and we say I will wait on the Lord I recover my strength I recover my confidence I recover my conviction I recover my courage I recover my sharp sightedness like that of the eagle but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall run and not be weary somebody there they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and they shall not faint I pray that this will be the time the power for your present hour that God will give you give us the victory that we used to have and much more will go beyond in Jesus name point number two is the preventive power for embattled Christians in the world preventive power for embattled Christians in the world we need to understand we need to remember that there are spirits that fight against us we need to remember there are things that fight against our progress we need to remember there are people that fight against us and then we abandon the race we abandon our goal we abandon the dream we abandon the ambition we abandon the aspiration we abandon our goal because of those things that fight against our progress but as we come to this retreat we come to recover all all the good things we used to have a prayer life a victory over sin a victory over sickness our power over demonic spirit and the conviction of a life of an unconquerable life everything we have lost we're recovering in jesus name embattled because of the things that fight against us second corinthians chapter 10 verse 4 for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal they try to fight spiritual battle with natural strength with worldly strength you try to fight spiritual battle with secular education you try to fight spiritual battle with native wisdom you're not going to overcome because all those things are human all those things are carnal because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal if you fight with carnal weapons the devil will laugh at you 
And the devil will have a free day to say, He has overcome already. But we will surprise every demon, every devil, and Satan at this time in Jesus' name. Because we're going to turn over from carnal weapons to spiritual weapons, mighty weapons. We're going to recover our victory. Every Christian here, you recover your victory. Every invitee here, you will recover your victory. Every local church, we're going to recover our victory. And if they're trying to run you out of town, and try to run you out of the place of authority, the Lord has called you, you're coming back to that place of dominion in Jesus' name. And battles, and then you are running away from battle. Now you come back, come and be victorious. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strong holes. Pulling down of strong holes. Pulling down will pull them down. Do you notice the language there? Pulling down. That means they are above. And you are below. An unfortunate situation. That sin has been overpowering you. Overwhelming your life. Above you. Now you are going to pull those things down. Under your feet in Jesus name. And it talks about strongholds. There are people that are held in a stronghold. It's like a particular bad habit. A particular defiling nature. A particular sinful trait overcomes them, overcomes them, overcomes them. It becomes a stronghold. They want to be free, they cannot be free. They cry. I want to set themselves loose, they cannot. It's a stronghold. It is at this retreat, all those strongholds of sin will be pulled down. The strongholds of sickness, that, that perpetual sickness is there. And all the things you thought you were going to do before, I'll go there at the beginning of the year, I'll reach there, beginning of the year, I'll climb that mountain, beginning of the year, Lo and behold, the stronghold of sickness tied him down, tied her down. And you were not able to do it. Now we come to the end of the year. And you look back to the rest of the year. And you put a finger of regret in your mouth. If I had known, I would have done this, this, and this. The Lord will wipe your regrets away. Because that's how we came. That's all the things that have battled against your life. The time has come to pull them down. Casting down imaginations. And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. All the knowledge of the promises of God you had, you couldn't overcome. All the knowledge of the doctrine. Of the knowledge of God your heart. You couldn't have the victory. All the knowledge. Of believing God. Holding on to the faithfulness of God. At your heart. Everything became zero in your life. Because of those high things. That fought against your life and progress. Thank God. The time has come. To bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Once again, you are going to be victorious. And all the backsliding will be taken away. Cowardice, fear of sin partners, all that will be taken away. 
you will rise up in the strength of the Lord in the power of the Lord and what defeated you before you will overcome from this time on in Jesus name in uh, Hebrews chapter 13 Hebrews chapter 12 rather Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 wherefore seeing we also are compassed about was so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight you want to overcome lay aside every weight the things that weigh on your conscience the things that weigh on your spirit the things that weigh on your heart heavily that you're not able to even find yourself lay aside every weight and then it says and the sin that so easily beset us they impede your progress they destroy your chances they weaken your conscience they deaden your conscience and it says they are the sins that so easily beset you and once you see her it's like you become like a jellyfish once you see him it's like all the decisions of life are forgotten the sin that so easily beset us once you see the money then all your consecration is forgotten the sin that so easily beset us lay them aside and let us run with patience the race that is set before us looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. This battle will soon be over. You will overcome. We will overcome. All the things that have tried to seize our spiritual lives, our spiritual convictions, small, small things, little, little things, that became like a big mountain we're going to overcome song of solomon chapter 2 verse 15 song of solomon chapter 2 verse 15 take us the foxes the little foxes that spoil the vines for vines have tender grapes the things that come into your life and when they come into your life or oh, you think it's a little mosquito this cannot do any harm the things that come to eat up the foundation of the conviction of your temple Oh, this will not do anything. It's a little termite. It won't do anything at all. The things that come to the purity of your heart. Or oh, it's a little drop of poison. It will not do any harm to the bottle of clean water. Little, little things that eventually now you battle against them and they battle against you. And although you said there were small, small things, now you cannot win the victory. That's why we came together at this time. Your time of victory has come. Victory over sin, the time has come. Victory over those little, little compromises, the time of victory has come. And the victory over those foxes, Little foxes, 
little termites, little seeds that erode into conviction of life. All those things that bring lust and defilement because you open the gates to them. We're going to have the victory in Jesus' name. You will be pure. You will be holy. You will be righteous. Purity a hundred percent in the heart. Holiness a hundred percent in the life. When all those little, little things that challenge holiness in your life, when they're taken away, and then Christ becomes enthroned in your life, victory has come in Jesus' name. First Timothy chapter 5. Verse 22. First Timothy chapter 5. Verse 22. Lay hands suddenly on no man. Neither be partakers of other men's sins. Keep thyself pure. Impurity will try to war against your life. Defilement will try to war against your life. And you battle with them. But it says, keep yourself pure. You'll be pure. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 22. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 22. Abstain from all appearance of evil all the things you've been excusing before in your life that doesn't matter it just appears to be evil get rid of it that's very small I can overcome it why didn't you overcome it get rid of it and I'm staying all appearance of evil so that victory will be yours through and through in Jesus name somebody having the victory there said victory will be yours in Jesus name verse 23 and the very God of peace sanctify you holy and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he. That calleth you. Tell me. Tell me. Tell me. Faithful is he. That calleth you. Who also. Will do it. He'll do it in every one of our lives. In Jesus name. Point number three. Perpetual power. I will have power. I said, I will have power. Perpetual power for endued conquerors in the world. You cannot conquer if you don't have power. Power in your spirit. Power, boldness, and courage in your soul. Power, determination in your mind. Power, the power of purpose, the power that comes at the Spirit of God is poured abundantly upon your life. The power that does not run away from the challenge, but the power that faces every temptation and says, This time I will overcome. You will overcome. The power that will not make you run away from trial hiding but the power that comes out in the strength and the might of the Lord and say whatever the trial may be a lion on the way I'm going to cross over I'm getting into the kingdom you'll get to the kingdom in Jesus name the endowment of power from on high 
There's power in salvation. There's a greater power in sanctification. And as a gift of power in the Holy Ghost baptism. And as power in conviction. And as power in knowledge. And as power in commitment and consecration. Entire consecration. And as power in transformation. Total transformation that makes you like Jesus Christ. Luke chapter 24 reading from verse 49 Luke chapter 24 reading from verse 20, 49 and behold I send the promise of my father upon you but tarry but wait but seek the Lord but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Here Jesus told his own disciples, he was going away from them. He had given them the commission. He had given them the mandate. He had told them the kind of life they will live. And the work they will do. He has itemized for them. Everything that they'll get done. But he said, the way you are. The stage in which you are. Your level at this time. Will not be able to carry it out. To the logical conclusion. Therefore tarry, wait. In Jerusalem until we're going to wait for one day two days or three days until are we going to pray for five minutes ten minutes until until you be in deal with power from on high the reason we have come to this retreat is to recover strength recover power and be refreshed in the presence of the Lord. It is not retreat as usual. It is not gathering as usual. Want to have power for the present hour. So that temptations come from now on, you always overcome. Trials come from now on, you always overcome. Challenges come from now, you always overcome. A duty calls from now, you always overcome. The fear of will I be able to do it may come, but you'll overcome that fear. And to have that power, perpetual power, prevailing power, a kind of power that nothing can make to crumble he says you will wait you will tarry and then you pray until that power comes while you're tarrying you examine your life repentance you will repent any restitution to make you say to all the Lord and say to all the people I was waiting for another amen there any restitution to make, you will search over the Lord and search over the people. I was giving you another chance to say amen. Yeah. And then the power, the power of a cleansed life, the power of a converted life, the power of a consecrated life, and the power of a sanctified life, that power will come in Jesus' name. Isaiah 40 verse 29 He gave it power To the faint And to them that have no might He increases strength Even the youth shall faint and be weary And the young men shall utterly fall But 
They that do what? They that do what? They that wait. They that wait upon the Lord. That's what it takes. You wait in prayer. You wait in seeking the face of the Lord. You wait in knocking at the door of his mercy. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. Because new strength has now come. They shall walk and they shall not faint. Because new power has now come. That power will come upon your life in Jesus' name. Second Corinthians chapter 4. First Corinthians chapter 4. Verse 20. First Corinthians chapter 4. Verse 20. For the kingdom of God is not in words, but in power. The kingdom of God is not in words, but in power. The people that can talk, talk, and talk about the kingdom, about salvation, about sanctification, about holiness, about purity of heart, about Holy Ghost baptism, is not talk. For the kingdom of God is not in words, but in power. That's why we're tarrying. That's why we're waiting. That's why we're seeking the Lord. And we're going to pray in this retreat like we never prayed before. And we're going to seek the face of the Lord. And wait on the Lord like we never waited before in Jesus' name. And then the power of the Lord himself will come mightily upon our lives in Jesus' name. Romans chapter 14 verse 17 Romans chapter 14 verse 17 for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink the kingdom of God is not meat and drink there are many people when they come to the retreat instead of focusing attention on what they came for power for the present hour they go about complaining they complain about this about this about that and about food and drink meat and drink and they lose focus this retreat you will not lose focus you will not complain you see how weak that amen is You will not grumble. You will not fight. You will not struggle. When food is being distributed, when anything is being distributed, you will not shout. You will not be unruly. You will not forget yourself. I said you will not forget yourself. You remember you are here for the kingdom here for the kingdom here for the kingdom for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink but righteousness will pursue that and peace we're going to have that and joy in the Holy Ghost joy in the Holy Ghost to come upon our lives in Jesus name only the courageous will be crowned and at this critical hour the hour of temptation and trial at this critical hour the hour of distress and discouragement at this critical hour the hour of conflict and compromise at this critical hour, the hour of pressure and perplexity. At this critical hour, the hour of weariness and lukewarmness. 
The hour of backsliding and falling away. The hour of worldliness and carnality. We, every one of us say, we will be empowered. We will be equipped. Be strengthened to resist all evil. And we will overcome in Jesus' name. We will conquer the flesh. We will conquer the devil. We will conquer the world. We will keep the faith. And we will be constantly victorious over every sin the devil may throw against our life in Jesus' name. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Luke chapter 10. Verse 19, Behold, I give unto you power. That's why I told them to tarry. That's why I told them to wait at the end of the gospel according to Luke. In chapter 10, he had told them, I give unto you power. But they had not waited, they had not sought the Lord. To get all the power they could have. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. They will not walk over you, you will walk over them. And over all the power of the enemy. Enemy within, enemy without. Enemy on the road, enemy in the street. Enemy in the office and enemy everywhere. Nobody will stop your journey half true. You are going to have the power over every kind of enemy. Spiritual, physical, natural, whatever. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. And nothing shall by any means hinder you. And nothing shall by any means stop you. And nothing shall by any means weaken you. You will be strong. Behold, I send the promise of my father upon you. But are ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. It's time to seek the Lord for that power. And tonight, you will tarry, you will pray, you will seek the face of the Lord. Power in salvation. Power in restoration. Power to conquer self in sanctification. And power to do everything the Lord has will for you to do in the Holy Ghost baptism. Power within, power around, power today, power tomorrow, power perpetual. It will come upon your life in Jesus' name. You repent. You make restitutions. You restore. You consecrate. You hold on to the promises of God. You seek the face of the Lord. And power as in Bible days, will come upon your life once again in Jesus' name. We're rising up and we're seeking the face of the Lord. We're rising up and we're praying. Our state overseers and our region overseers and the camp commandants and the people who are overseeing the camps in all the other places. You lead our people in prayer. I want to have power. This is individual praying. And this is personal praying. This is seeking the face of the Lord. You seek the face of the Lord until sinners are saved. Believers are sanctified. Sanctified believers are filled with the Holy Ghost. We're going to have power. Anybody there going to have power? We're going to have power. Anybody there going to seek the face of the Lord for power? We're going to have power. Open your mouth and tell the Lord, we want power, we need power, we're seeking the Lord. You'll give that power. Salvation, get that settled. Sanctification, get that secured. Holy Ghost baptism, 
Seek the face of the Lord and have power for your hour.